I'm back with another round of Linux news this week. Today, we're going to be talking about Rust in the Linux kernel, new updates to both KDE and GNOME, Steam improving, gaming on Linux, and more. We're going to first start out with some Rust updates as Linux kernel version 6.17 is receiving more Rust updates. This version of Linux continues to integrate the Rust programming language into the Linux kernel. This release here is going to include more Rust APIs for the kernel, including new modules and features, crate improvements, expanded tooling, and refactoring of code. This is a big deal for Linux as it's ongoing work in a shift for Linux kernel development as we pave the way for more languages in the kernel. As Rust continues to get integrated with the Linux kernel historically, and predominantly being written in C, as it gave low-level control, portability, and predictable performance, Rust is a significant adder. As a whole new language gets integrated, hi Linus, this is the next round of Rust support. This is my first pull that has merges that you already have from elsewhere, three merge bases, so I've provided the diff stat of the test merge instead of the generated one. I still include those changes in short log and tag message, but in short, the rush changes for version 6.17 are what I laid out here on the right-hand side at the beginning of the video. A big deal for Rust and the Linux kernel as we are going to see more and more implementation of it continuing on to newer versions of the kernel. So here's a really interesting one for GNOME as a new AI-powered virtual assistant is going to get into the GNOME desktop. That's right here, the Newell project has reached an official 1.0 release five days ago, and Newell is your ultimate virtual assistant. What it does is it allows you to run and perform tasks, including searching the web, terminal commands, file management, document editing, and more, and supports local language models, as well as the online ones like OpenAI, Gemini, Grok, so on and so forth, but basically gives you these features here, which include things like running mini apps, integrated web browser, a built-in terminal, file editor, so on and so forth, and can do a lot for your system. This is very interesting as it is one of the first attempts to integrate AI directly into the Linux desktop, especially for GNOME. It demonstrates how the growing market for LLMs and voice assisted bots in open source environments is actually a big deal. And this is now available on Flathub. And of course the code is available here on GitHub. It's an interesting step forward for the GNOME desktop as it came into the 2.10 periodic updates for news in this week in GNOME. A few small things like the GNOME core apps and libraries got updated, circle apps and libraries as well. But by far the biggest announcement here is again, Newell 1.0 has been released, huge release for this AI assistant for GNOME. Let's briefly watch their video here as it shows you some integrated use of the actual AI assistant. It goes through things pretty quickly here, but you kind of get the gist of what you can do, including adding things like third party extensions and navigating the web or using the calendar to edit events all through the Newell Navigator. And it's very interesting. It is nice that you can integrate this stuff directly into the desktop. That way you can perform desktop tasks. I'm very interested in how all of this is going to play out and whether other Linux desktop environments are going to go down this route as well, as this is the first production ready AI assistant that we're seeing on Linux. And now I want to talk about major speed boosts. But before we do, if you enjoy videos like this, take a moment and subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video. YouTube can get finicky. Also smash that like button so this gets out to more people so we can spread the love of Linux. Let's talk about major speed boosts when running x86-64 games on ARM architecture as the FX 2508 is released with big juicy JIT optimizations. And for those of you that don't know what FEX is, FEX is fast emulation execution as they steal the X from execution. That's why it's called FEX. It's an open source user mode emulator that allows x86-64 Linux binaries to run on ARM64 Linux systems. It's a great tool for people running ARM right now as it allows them to run Linux applications and games from the x86-64 architecture on ARM. And you can think of newer laptops or even Raspberry Pi 5, Apple M1, M2, M3, so on and so forth, being able to run Linux games and apps, including things like Steam on an ARM-based system. It really bridges that gap between the two as we really need a compatibility layer here at the moment at least, because ARM is really not being focused on when it comes to Linux. Either way, these new big juicy just-in-time JIT optimizations really 
improve how much performance has been, well, they call it lifted. To start off, let's show off some of the performance graphs for a handful of games. What this shows here is the varying different games, including, it's a little hard to read here, Cyberpunk 2077, Stray, God of War, Doom 2016, and Grim Fandango Remastered and Teardown. All seeing massive improvements with the biggest improvement being right under 40% FPS improvement by using the latest and greatest effects released code 2508 versus 2507 incredible and some of these other games are seeing a 20 to 30 percent gain as well and that's how better just-in-time compilation using the cpu's call return prediction hardware helps run games much better and will only continue to see improvements as now the average fps for running games like doom here went from 150 frames per second to around 197 or if we just look at Cyberpunk, which is probably one of the most intensive resource using games. It went from 50 to almost 70 frames per second. That's a big jump. Very cool for people using ARM. Let's keep moving on. As we already talked about GNOME, I want to talk about KD. As we receive the day to night theme switching, well, this has already been a part of KD for quite a while, but we're finally getting support for automatic day night theme switching, a long requested feature. I'm super glad to see this finally coming in as Plasma 6.5 now can switch to a different global theme at night. And you can tell by this new toggle switch right up here. But you can also now choose which global themes are shown on the system settings, quick settings page and turn on or off automatic day night switching from there. You can also choose to always see the light or dark variants of wallpapers that include both. So you can see here your options are based on whether the color scheme is dark or light, based on the day night cycle, always use light variant, always use dark variant. For those of us who are privy to dark mode, this all is a fantastic update. A great improvement as that was the focus for this week's KDE 6.5 editions. It's always fun to watch how KDE is just polishing their Linux desktop experience for the users. We'll keep following things, but this is a massive improvement as people have been longingly requesting this feature and it's, and it's finally been put into KDE. Now let's talk about the Steam client on Linux as it brings some notable improvements. The biggest one is actually a fix for UI scaling under X Wayland. A few things fixed here, including fixing a crash on Linux if 32-bit GTK3 libraries are installed. The general here is added a customization tab to game properties. We have the store menu fix blur issue for users with GPU acceleration turned on. Store menu top genres should now be more relevant and dynamic. Store menu added a store home link. Another one fixed a bug that sometimes causes chat tabs to not contain the name or the avatar of a of a chat participant and then fix context menus showing empty spaces at some UI scales. But that's not the important part. The big deal here is on Linux, they fixed the Steam UI scale not updating with the system DPI changes in X Wayland and also fixed the case where Steam would freeze and fail to recover after a process crash. And this is awesome as we've had long standing scaling issues with Steam on Wayland and X Wayland and now we're getting an improved experience with high DPI Linux setups. This is awesome as we see a reinforcement of Valve's commitment to giving us a first class Linux gaming experience. I love to see them focusing on Linux a little bit here. So it's exciting to read about this new Steam client beta. And speaking about the Steam client beta, let's talk about the Steam hardware and software survey for July 2025, as this just dropped. Linux is about to hit the 3% market share for operating systems when it comes to gaming, which now may mark the largest number of Linux users ever in the gaming market share here on Steam, at least when it comes to these surveys, but we can see here, Linux is at the 2.89, let's just give it 2.9% of all gaming on Steam. But of course, Windows is still on top, but you can see significant gains and losses here as about 0.44, let's just call it a half percent, have moved over to either OS X or Linux. And really Linux taking on a majority of that share, increasing by 0.32% this month. This hopefully is signaling a small, but ever growing momentum for real world adoption when it comes to gaming and using Linux. Things like the Steam Deck have definitely pushed all this forward, but also Steam and Valve themselves have really encouraged people to go over to Linux by improving game compatibility and focusing on things like performance 
as we saw in the last segment. Hopefully one day we get to that 10% mark, which would be a massive deal, as eventually we could even see a snowball effect. Let me know if you're using Linux the game. As we move on to the Wayback.2 release, we're gonna be talking about this but before we do, if you're ready to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and my map, all available at SavvyNick.com. You can download those today. And way back, point two is getting early bug fixes here, including things like fixing looping issues with session launch, adding version information to command outputs, improving child processes and handling without relying on signal terminate, and available now in the Gen 2 Guru and Nix packages. For some of you, who are not quite familiar with the Wayback Project, this is a project that is meant to help legacy X11 applications run on a pure Wayland environment, which is of course crucial for the long-term transition over from X11 to Wayland. It's a project that aims to provide a cleaner alternative to X Wayland, hopefully with better integration and resource handling. It's a fairly new project as it just had released the point one release and now we're already on the point two release. This is all in alpha. As the first preview release was just last month as well. Wayback really aims to be a drop-in replacement for Xorg, powered by Wayland. It's going to support X11 environments via X Wayland inside of its minimal compositor. This is going to help users and distros maintain legacy X setups. This is more for distributions than users, actually. Because if Wayback is a success, Linux systems can now preserve without carrying outdated Xorg server code. We'll continue to follow this project as they have a lot of remaining work with some massive community support behind it. And in other news, EXT4 on Linux 6.17 is seeing a major scalability boost, mainly when it comes to block allocation and scalability. As with systems that have many, many CPU cores, for example, on modern servers, the EXT4 block allocation path had bottlenecks, especially when it came to concurrent file operations like Falicate, which caused performance degradation. The solution here is some of the submitted patches redesign how EXT4 handles blocks and allocation of metadata. The results are significant speed up when it comes to fallocate throughput, so creating, reserving, and using file blocks, especially when it comes to high concurrency or places where many CPU cores are being used, which is all Exciting. It's a major improvement that unlocks performance on modern hardware by scaling EXT4 better across many cores. And that's not all. I talk about some of the large folio work that's been done on EXT4. I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can check that video out. It's very interesting. And I go way more in depth with the major EXT4 changes that are occurring. As they continue to work on these large folios, I'm super excited to see what EXT4 is going to look like for users on Linux kernel version 6.17. As I continue to follow through many, many patches that get added almost on a daily to improve our experiences on Linux. And that's about it. If you're interested in more videos like this, do not forget to go down and subscribe below. Also, smash that like button on the way back up. Let me know what you think about this week's Linux news in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.